Hey there, my YouTube pals. Traveling Troy here. Today I'm hanging out over at Buffalo Park in Flagstaff, Arizona. The absolutely gorgeous, beautiful Buffalo Park. There's jogging, walking, biking, hiking, you name it. Cool place and it's absolutely gorgeous. Anyways, let's get down to business here. This is the final video of the Astrovan build series. Woohoo! Uh, finally completed that thing. Today is a special day as well. I'm dedicating this video to a special person, but that will come up in a few seconds. First, it's time to break those chains. This video is dedicated to my mom, Judy. She passed away a year ago today, June 22nd, 2017. Before we get into the kitchen build, I want to show you a couple of the electrical upgrades we made. Number one, we removed the Windy Nation solar controller and we replaced it with a Wanderer solar controller uh, from Renogy. On this Wanderer solar controller, notice that the PV light here is blinking. That's the solar power coming in. Well, we added this switch that allows us to cut the solar off completely if we want to test things out. We next added this new power meter display to show how many amps are coming in from solar and what the battery level is at. Now if you flip the switch up here at the top that I struggle to do here, ah, okay got it, it shows how many amps we're actually using. Now the only thing is the reason we added that switch is right now it shows zero because we're bringing in more than we're letting out. Here's the power meter on a nice bright sunny day showing that my solar panels are bringing in at about 14 amps they maxed out at about 15. Another upgrade we decided to make was to add a battery isolator into the engine compartment of the van. I already have solar and I have shore power but this will allow me to continue to ch charge the batteries on rainy days. As you may recall from build 8 and 9, we basically pulled everything out, added new flooring, put everything back in, reverse a chair, and add an office setup. So this is where we're starting with the new kitchen build. A blank slate here in the back of the van. The first step in building this kitchen was to figure out where everything was going to go. We've got limited space, so the first thing we need to decide is where is the refrigerator going, because that's the biggest item. But it hadn't been delivered yet, so we're basically using this cooler and elevating it to kind of get to the right level to start testing. Initially we thought this would be a great spot for the refrigerator with storage off to the left and the kitchen counter to the right. But then as we move things around we changed our minds on that. When the Dometic CFX 28 refrigerator was delivered we built a nice platform for it, the space under it to be determined later, and we planned this to be our counter level, the top of the refrigerator to be our counter level. And here's a look at the new countertop that we've got placed in temporarily. We're kind of checking the height of these six gallon water jugs. We need to make sure we have enough room for hoses to be attached. And here's a front panel view of the Dometic CFX 28 refrigerator that we have installed. Uh, it's 27 quart refrigerator and that means it can fit about 43 cans. And here's an inside look at the refrigerator. We put a few things in there for an overnight test to see how things worked, and everything worked great. When designing this kitchen build, we knew we wanted to be able to access the kitchen from the inside or the outside, and to cook from the inside or the outside, or to access the refrigerator or the sink from the inside or the outside. Here's a look at what the kitchen is looking like at this point from inside the van. Hey look, we've got a faucet. I know, I know, it's probably a little bit overkill for this small of a sink, but I wanted it to be high enough to be able to wash dishes, and then I also wanted to be able to pull the hose off if I wanted to take a shower in the back of the van, outside the van. And that open countertop area to the right of the sink is where I plan on doing cooking. That's where the cooktop will go. When I'm not cooking, I store the cooktop just below the sink in this nice little storage area. Here's an overall look at the kitchen area as we're kind of testing things out, making sure everything's working properly. We've got our 
water we got our fresh water tanks down there uh, our gray water tank we got the cooktop up there and we're just kind of testing things out here's a look at the water tanks so we have an electric water pump and when I flip the switch and turn on the faucet water starts flowing from these two gray freshwater tanks each of these tanks holds about six gallons of water but I only put five gallons in each one of them now there as you can see the one in the middle here the gray the bluish gray tank in the middle has a hose in it when that tank is empty I just move the hose to the other tank now the black hose here is coming down from the sink drain and empties into this gray water tank well I call them tanks but they're really just jugs anyways this one with the black hose coming to it that's the gray water jug and it's a collapsible jug but it has a couple problems number one it doesn't hold enough water so I'm constantly having to empty it and number two it sweats so the floor below it is always wet I later replaced the collapsible jug with this nice blue hard plastic jug I believe it's five or six gallons but the neat thing about it is whenever one of these bluish gray tanks is empty I know that the darker blue gray tank is full and that means it's time to empty that gray tank or the blue jug in this case dark blue jug in this case and thank you cousin Bobby for the donation of this hard plastic blue jug woohoo thanks and the last thing I want to show you on this kitchen build is this drawer that is under the refrigerator it slides both inside or outside of the van and it it now holds pots pans and silverware utensils well you may recall from previous videos that I had shelves in my van but I didn't have any doors or any any way to hold things on these shelves well I discovered organized obi I'll have a link to their website in the description, but they make these, they make a wide variety of nets, but then they make these barrier nets in different lengths, and I bought these, and they've been working great so far to hold my things in. Here's a look from the outside. On the top shelf, I'm keeping hats and beanies on one side, and I'm keeping my bathroom items on the other side. In the middle shelving area, I keep all my clothing there and some shoes and then the bottom section is my food pantry. They come with a wide variety of hardware to keep the nets in place and here's a look at one of the hooks that I use in my setup. Another big upgrade to the van was to add blackout curtains to the front of the van. This is looking towards the driver's cab and to the sliding door. I bought these curtains from Walmart. They're the 99% blackout curtains as you can see they're nice and snug to the ceiling and they have a nice seal going in between th the two curtains which really blocks out light from leaving the van or from light coming into the van I made the curtain rods using PVC pipe I cut it to fit in between this section and then I screwed one, I put one screw on each side of the PVC pipe and then I cut a piece of rebar the length in between the two screws and slid the rebar inside the PVC pipe to give it more strength to hold the curtain up. The clip here on the PVC pipe is what I use to hold the curtains in place when I'm driving. I like to drive the windows down a lot so the wind will make the curtain flap all over the place unless I have this clip in place. And here's the junction where the two curtains meet. The cab area curtain and the sliding door curtain. To secure the PVC pipes to the ceiling, I first, on the bottom side here, I drilled out a hole that would allow me to fit my drill bit in there. I then pushed a screw in there and used my driver to go ahead and drill into the metal. After the PVC pipe was in place, I measured between the screws on each end of the PVC pipes and I cut a piece of rebar to fit exactly in between the two screws. Then I unscrewed one side, slid the rebar in, and screwed it back in. The rebar was added to ensure that over time the PVC pipe wouldn't begin to sag due to the weight of the curtains. And last but not least was the addition of my first piece of artwork in the van. This is Froggy. It was given to me by my stepmom, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, my YouTube pals, for checking out my videos. My very next video will be the full van tour. So make sure you subscribe and please like this video and comment. Thank you very much.